I moved to Los Angeles about 10 years ago to pursue acting full time. And, you know, it took me about seven years to get this role. It was a dream role for me. And before that, you know, I was auditioning and doing small roles on other projects and just trying to do whatever I could to get a project like this. And, you know, it, there's been a lot of ups and downs, a lot of challenges along the way. But I'm glad that, you know, I had the journey that I had before I got to being on a show like Never Have I Ever. Mindy Kaling had put out a social media casting call for the roles of Kamala Devi and Nalini. And she basically, it was a global casting search. And I submitted a self-taped audition, just like uh, my three did also for Devi. And that's how I was called in for a callback and eventually got the role. Have been on Never Have I Ever doesn't mean that now, you know, it's set. You know, I still have to look out for what the next job is and make sure that, you know, I'm always taking on roles that are, you know, if, if I am portraying a South Asian character, making sure that they are authentically written and that they're never caricatures and that they're fully fleshed characters. And, you know, it's definitely been a struggle to find those roles. And especially before Never Have I Ever, it was very, very difficult to find a role that I felt um, was true to not just myself, but to my, my culture and to my community. My teacher is here in the U.S. Her name is Srimati Anuradha Nag. She's a disciple of Pandit Bridge Maharaj. And I started learning at the age of five. And I have also been uh, trained in India with Maharaji's company. And uh, it's been about 25 plus years now. You know, I actually grew up in a very, uh, in, a, in a community with a lot of other South Asian people. So I wasn't the only brown person at my school. You know, I actually have a, had a lot of uh, Desi and Indian friends growing up. And, you know, my family and we had a large circle of uh, South Asian family friends and, you know, big extended family here. So I'm very blessed in the sense that I never felt disconnected from my culture growing up and, and being the fact that I grew up doing Indian classical dance and my parents also are musicians and they they also do Indian music. So, you know, culture was very much a part of my life growing up here. But of course, at the same time, you know, growing up here versus growing up in India is, is very different as a brown person. And, uh, you know, I definitely felt that pull between the two cultures often growing up. And even now, you know, it's still something that I have to navigate. Uh, but I just feel really blessed to come from such a rich and beautiful culture and, and you know, the fact that the arts are such a big part of our culture, I think is part of the reason why I decided to become an artist. Father moved to California when he was in his 20s to get his PhD. And uh, my mom actually moved from Mysore to the US when she was seven years old. So she grew up here for most of her life. But when my dad moved here, he started a Bollywood music band with his friends at his college. And he was looking for a female lead singer and my mom was a singer. So she auditioned for his band and became the lead singer. And that's how they met and they fell in love and they were not introduced by their parents or their families. That's how they met. And that's um, how they got married. And they still have the band that they uh, performed with at that time, they still perform to this day. Now, almost everyone that I know, all my friends and every story that I hear of, of couples getting engaged now, I think almost everyone is meeting on apps these days. But, you know, we met uh, f about five, six years ago on an app called Bill Mill. And it was started obviously by an Indian person and it was for um, South Asian people looking for other South Asian people. So that's how my husband and I met. I have known people in my personal life that suffer from men mental illness and um, and my mom is a therapist. So mental health has always been a subject and a topic that our family talks very openly about. And I think that's wonderful because we all know in our culture and, and all over the world, mental health is still a very um, stigmatized topic and you know we don't really talk about it. So that's why some it's always been something that has been important to me and in my work.